Welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. Michael Dickerson, KC9PHK, continuing on the 2019 to 2023 general class question study pool uh, presented on behalf of the Clay County Area Amateur Radio Club located in Southern Illinois. Today we'll be covering or starting with G1E control categories, repeater regulations, third party rules, ITU regions, and automatically controlled digital stations. First one, G1E01, which of the following would disqualify a third party from participating in stating a message over an amateur station? A. The third party's amateur license has been revoked and not reinstated. B. The third party is not a U.S. citizen. C. The third party is a licensed amateur. Or D. The third party is speaking in a language other than English. Correct answer is A. The third party's amateur license has been revoked and not reinstated. G1E02. When may a 10 meter repeater retransmit the 2 meter signal from a station that has a technician class operator? A. Under no circumstances. B. Only if the station on 10 meters is operating under special temporary authorization allowing such retransmission. Or C. During an FCC declared general state of communications emergency. D. Only if the 10 meter repeater control operator holds at least a general class license. Correct answer is D. Only if the 10 meter repeater control operator holds at least a general class license. G1E03. What is required to conduct communications with a digital station operating under automatic control outside the automatic control band segments? A. The station initiating the contact must be under local or remote control. B. The interrogating transmission must be made by another automatically controlled station. C. No third party traffic may be transmitted. Or D. The control operator of the interrogating station must hold an amateur extra class license. Correct answer A. The station initiating contact must be under local or remote control. G1E04. Which of the following conditions require licensed amateur radio operator to take specific steps to avoid harmful interference to other users or facilities? A. When operating within one mile of an FCC monitoring station. B. When using a band where the amateur service is secondary. C. When a station is transmitting spread spectrum emissions. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct. G105. What types of messages for a third party in another country may be transmitted by an amateur station? A. Any message as long as the amateur radio operator is not paid. B. Only messages for other licensed operators. C. Only messages relating to amateur radio or remarks of personal character or messages relating to emergencies or disaster relief. D. Any messages as long as the text of the message is recorded in the station log. The best answer here is C. Only messages relating to amateur radio or remarks of a personal character or messages relating to emergencies or disaster relief. G1E06. What are the frequency allocations in which ITU region apply to radio amateurs operating in North and South America? A. Region 4. B. Region 3. C. Region 2. Or D. Region 1. Correct answer here is C. Region 2. G1E07, in what part of the 13 centimeter band may an amateur station communicate with non-licensed Wi-Fi stations? A. Anywhere in the band. B. Channels 1 through 4. C. Channels 42 through 45. Or D. No part. Correct answer. D. No part. G1E08, what is the maximum peak envelope power output allowed for spread spectrum transmissions? A. 100 milliwatts. B. 10 watts. C. 100 watts. Or D. 1500 watts. Correct answer is B. 10 watts. G1E09. Under what circumstances are messages that are sent via digital modes exempt from Part 97 third party rules that apply to other modes of communication? A. Under no circumstances. B. When messages are encrypted. C. When messages are not encrypted. Or D. When under automatic control. Correct answer here is A, under no circumstances. G1E10, why should an amateur operator normally avoid transmitting on 14.100, 18.110, 21.150, 
24.930 and 28.200 MHz. A. A system of propagation beacon stations operates on those frequencies. B. A system of automatic digital stations operates on those frequencies. C. These frequencies are set aside for emergency operation. Or D. These frequencies are set aside for bulletins from the FCC. Correct answer is A. A system of propagation beacon stations operates on those frequencies. G1E11. On what bands may automatic controlled stations transmitting RTTY or data emissions communicate with other automatically controlled digital stations. A. On any band segment where digital operation is permitted. B. Anywhere in the non-phone segments of the 10 meter or shorter wavelengths band. C. Only in the non-phone extra segments of the band. Or D. Anywhere in the 6 meter or shorter wavelengths band and in limited segments of some of the HF bands. Correct answer is D, anywhere in the 6 meter or shorter wavelengths band and in limited segments of the sum of the HF bands. Going on, sub-element G2, operating procedures. G2A covers phone operating procedures, upper sideband, lower sideband conventions, breaking into a contact, and Vox operation. G2A01, which sideband is most commonly used for voice communications on frequencies of 14 megahertz or higher? A. Upper sideband. B. Lower sideband. C. Vestigial sideband. Or D. Double sideband. Correct answer here is going to be A. Upper sideband. G2A02. Which of the following modes is most commonly used for voice communications on the 160 meter, 75 meter, and 40 meter bands? A. Upper sideband. B. Lower sideband. C. Vestigial sideband. Or D. Double sideband. Answer here is B, lower sideband. G2A03, which of the following is most commonly used for single sideband voice communications in the VHF and UHF bands? A, upper sideband. B, lower sideband. C, vestigial sideband. Or D, double sideband. Answer here, A, upper sideband. G2A04, which mode is most commonly used for voice communications on the 17 meter and 12 meter bands? A, upper sideband. B, lower sideband. C. Vestigial sideband or D. Double sideband? Answer A. Upper sideband. G2A05. Which mode of voice communication is most commonly used on the HF amateur bands? A. Frequency modulation. B. Double sideband. C. Single sideband or D. Phase modulation? Answer is C. Single sideband. G2A06, which of the following is an advantage when using single sideband as compared to other analog voice modes on the HF amateur bands? A. Very high fidelity voice modulation. B. Less subject to interference from atmospheric static crashes. C. Ease of tuning on receive and immunity to impulse noise. Or D. Less bandwidth use and greater power efficiency. Correct answer here is D. Less bandwidth used and greatest power efficiency. G2A07, which of the following statements is true of the single sideband voice mode? A, only one sideband and the carrier are transmitted, the other sideband is suppressed. B, only one sideband is transmitted and the other sideband and carrier are suppressed. C, Single sideband is only voice mode that is authorized on the 20 meter, 15 meter, and 10 meter amateur bands. Or D, single sideband is the only voice mode that is authorized on the 160 meter, 75 meter, and 40 meter amateur bands. Correct answer is B, only one sideband is transmitted, the other sideband and carrier are suppressed. G2A08, what is the recommended way to break into a phone contact? A. Say QRZ several times followed by your call sign. B. Say your call sign once. C. Say breaker breaker. D. Say CQ followed by the call sign of either station. The best way is B. Say your call sign once. G2A09. Why do most amateur stations use the lower sideband on 160 meter, 75 meter, and 40 meter bands? A. Lower sideband is more efficient than upper sideband at these frequencies. B. Lower sideband is the only sideband legal on these frequency bands. C. Because it is fully compatible with an AM detector. Or D. It is good amateur practice. 
Correct answer, D. It is good amateur practice. G2A10, which of the following statements is true? A voice, vox operation versus PTT operation. A. The received signal is more natural sounding. B. It allows hands-free operation. C. It occupies less bandwidth. Or D. It provides more power output. Correct answer B. It allows hands-free operation. G2A11, generally, who should respond to a station in the contiguous 48 states who calls CQDX? So who should be responding to someone who's calling CQDX? A. Any caller is welcome to respond. B. Only stations in Germany. C. Any stations outside the lower 48. Or D. Only contest stations. Correct answer to this. Any station outside the lower 48 states. G2A12, what control is typically adjusted for proper ALC setting on an amateur single sideband transceiver? A. The RF clipping level. B. Transmit audio and microphone gain. C. Antenna inductance or capacitance. Or D. Attenuator level. Correct answer B. Transmit audio or microphone gain. Now to G2B, operating courtesy, band plans, emergencies, including drills and emergency communications. G2B01, which of the following is true concerning access to frequencies? A. Nets always have priority. B. QSOs in progress always have priority. C. Except during emergencies, no amateur station has priority access to any frequency. Or D. Contest operations must always yield to non-contest use of frequencies. The answer is C. Except during emergencies, no amateur station has priority access to any frequency. G2B02. What is the first thing you should do if you are communicating with another amateur station and hear a station in distress break in? A. Continue your communication because you were on the frequency first. B. Acknowledge a station in distress and determine what assistance may be needed. C. Change to a different frequency. Or D. Immediately cease all transmissions. Correct answer here is B. Acknowledge the station in distress and determine what assistance may be needed. G2B03. What is good amateur practice if propagation changes during a contact and you notice interference from other stations on the frequency? A. Tell the interfering stations to change frequency. B. Report the interference to your local amateur auxiliary coordinator. C. Attempt to resolve the interference problem with the other stations in a mutual acceptable manner. Or D. Increase power to overcome interference. The ideal solution is C. Attempt to resolve the interference problem with the other stations in a mutually acceptable manner. G2B04. When selecting a CW transmitting frequency, what minimum separation should be used to minimize interference to stations on adjacent frequencies? A. 5 to 50 hertz. B. 150 to 500 hertz. C. 1 to 3 kilohertz. Or D. 3 to 6 kilohertz. Correct answer here is B, 150 to 500 hertz. G2B05, when selecting a single sideband transmitting frequency, what minimum separation should be used to minimize interference to stations on adjacent frequencies? A, 5 to 50 hertz. B, 150 to 500 hertz. C, approximately 3 kilohertz. Or D, approximately 6 kilohertz. Correct answer C, approximately 3 kilohertz. G2B06, what is the practical way to avoid harmful interference on an apparently clear frequency before calling CQ on CW or phone? A, send QRL on CW followed by your call sign, or if using phone, ask if the frequency is in use followed by your call sign. B, listen for two minutes before calling CQ. C, send the letter V in Morse code several times and listen for a response or say test several times and listen for a response. D, send QSY on CW, or if using phone announce the frequency is in use, then give your call sign and listen for a response. Correct answer is A, send QRL on CW followed by your call sign, or if using phone, ask if the frequency is in use followed by your call sign. G2B07, which of the following complies with good amateur practice when choosing a frequency on which to initiate a call? A. Check to see if the channel is assigned to another station. B. Identify your station by transmitting your call sign at least three times. C. Follow the voluntary band plan for the operating mode you intend to use. 
or D, all of these choices are correct? Correct answer is C, follow the voluntary band plan for operating mode you intend to use. G2B08, what is the voluntary band plan restriction for the U.S. stations transmitting within the 48 contiguous states in the 50.1 to 50.125 MHz band segment? A, only contact with stations not within the 48 contiguous states. B, only contacts with other stations within the 48 contiguous states. C, only digital contacts. Or D, only slow scan TV contacts. Correct answer is A, only contacts with stations not within the 48 contiguous states. G2B09, who may be the control operator of an amateur station transmitting in races to assist relief operations during a disaster? A, only a person holding an FCC-issued amateur operator license. B, only a races net control operator. C, a person holding an FCC-issued amateur operator license or an appropriate government official. D, any control operator when normal communication systems are operational. Correct answer is A, only a person holding an FCC-issued amateur operator license. G2B10, when is an amateur station allowed to use any means at its disposal to assist another station in distress? A, only when transmitted in races. B, at any time when transmitting in an organized net. C, at any time during an actual emergency. Or D, only on authorized HF frequencies. Correct answer here is C, at any time during an actual emergency. G2B11, what frequency should be used to send a distress call? A, whichever frequency has the best chance of communicating the distress message. B, only frequencies authorized for RACES or ARIES stations. C, only frequencies that are within your operating privileges. Or D, only frequencies used by police, fire, or emergency medical services. Correct answer is A, whichever frequency has the best chance of communicating the distress message. And that right there will end the second video of the general class 2019 to 2020 question pool. Please continue as we slowly roll out more videos. Thank you for joining us.